Hello and welcome. This is Bakolile Ayeni, but you can call me Mrs. Ayeni. If you like today's video, please do give it a thumbs up and like the video. Also, if you have some thoughts, I would love to hear it down below on the comment section. While you are at it, if you like the topics that I'm covering and you would like to hear more of it, please uh, do hit the subscribe button and I will surely deliver on the promise. Well, I've been away for quite some time on this platform and while I was away, I turned 30, the big 3-0. And it got me thinking about life and everything that I have known about life. I'm a Christian and I've spoken about it on this platform that I got saved when I was like 14, 15 um, by that time. And since then, I believe that I have grown and I have seen the fruits of living a life that is based on biblical standards. <laughs> and I've been trying and giving it my best. And by God's grace, he has been helping me to live up that life. And um, one of the things that really um, pushed me or made me to do to, to um, today's video is to talk about two things that I have learned or one thing that I am grateful for and one thing that I'm actually applying in this season of my life as well. I remember when we were growing up, we were always told that, oh, you need to enjoy your life while you are still young because you'll not be young forever. Do everything that, that, that you want. Don't just live your life um, in, in in a closet or closed up and and all of those things that like you are young you are you are able to do everything go clubbing um date the boys that you want to date do everything that typical young people do and when i got saved as a 14 15 year old um, girl i had um some ladies or some older a woman who were like surprised and like why are you living your life like this you are young you're free you can do anything that you want to do but i'm thankful today that i did not listen to those types of advice but rather i gave my life to jesus and that is the first thing that i am grateful for or the mm, most important thing that i am grateful for i was about to say the only thing no it's, it's not the only thing but it was just like the beginning of the many things that i'll be grateful for is number one having a relationship with jesus i know the bible says in ecclesiastes 12 let's read that ecclesiastes 12 verse 1 we are reading on the easy version bible it says remember to serve god while you are young he is the one who made you. Your life will have many troubles in the future. During those years, you will say, I do not enjoy my life anymore. I've always meditated on this Bible verse that um, serve the Lord while you are still young. And it really motivated me or it kept me going because I knew that I will, I will not be young forever. So I would rather invest my young years serving God and living up to the standards because I know that once I start living with Him while I'm, while I'm young, it will be much more easy or better for me when I am older. But then, um, while I was preparing for this video this morning, I saw it clear, it, it, the verse or the chapter before that, Ecclesiastes 11 from verse 9 to 10. We are also reading it on the easy version. It says, young people, enjoy your life while you are young. Do the things that you think are good. Enjoy the things that you see. But remember, God will judge you for all the things that you do. Don't worry about things. Do not let your body cause you to have pain. You will not be young and strong very long. We all become old too quickly. <laughs> and then I realized that it's true. This Bible is true. We all won't be young for a very long time. And also... It says here, um, we all become old too quickly. Imagine, because for you to be considered as young or an adolescent 
the um your first a baby a toddler a a, a preschooler a teenager and then you are like a young adult once you get to 21 they consider you as an adult so while you are still on those um young years you have choices that you still have to make but now those choices they'll be reflecting on your adult life that how have you lived your life before that and i'm so grateful for what god has done in my life for keeping me for working with me and for doing all of those things for me as well not to say that if you did not serve god while you are young it means that your life is over no today we are not talking about that we've got abraham and sarah and all of those other people who met god at an at an older age and they also lived their best life once they met god but i'm talking about the younger ones that now if perhaps you are below the age of 21 or you are below the age of 30 you still have a chance you still have got time in your hands to be able to redirect your life and make sure that by the time that you get to 30 <laughs> you, you are not just trying to find god but actually you have put your feet in the reason why i'm talking about this is that i've met a lot a lot of older women in their 40s who have lived their life outside of god's purpose for their lives and then when they get to 40 and and above they realize that oh my goodness this god i actually need him but then i see that it's quite difficult for the not difficult but there's a lot of effort and a lot of work that you need to do to 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 put in for you to have a flowing relationship with jesus as compared to when you start your your, your relationship a bit uh, younger because um while i was also in university i had another lady um she was in her 30s by that time i was still like 18 and she was so amazed that oh my goodness my colleague you are 18 and you are not partying and you're not doing all of these things that young teenagers are doing on campus and you're deciding to live your life uh with christ and then she said that oh my goodness i wish i had the energy and the stamina that you have right now for me to live out the life of of god because as an adult you've got so many responsibilities you've got your career you've got kids you've got husband some 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 sometimes you've got financial responsibility you've got family responsibility as well so that time and that energy that you are supposed to use to invest to start up your relationship with god it has almost like depleted so it's not depleted but it's going down <laughs> so that's why the bible advises that while you are still young while you are still young serve god it's like an investment it will help you to cushion up and to make your life a bit easier when you are older so this is a message to my younger people if you are 30 and you are um, below 40 i can say that then please take time to invest in having a relationship with god it will help you a lot and please if you know somebody who is below the age of 30 or in their 30s please do send them this message that please listen to this and see what it means to serve god and then sometimes we also think that when we are saying that a life in christ is full of 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 amazing things we are always thinking oh you have cars you you have big houses you have all of those things but there's something called peace of mind ah peace of mind that money cannot buy there is a peace that comes with jesus and there is this joy that is within you when you know that you are loved by god and you are working with him as well and the second thing that i i i am applying right right, right now that god has been emphasizing to me is 
too streamlined. I remember I woke up the, the other day, I was praying, and then after prayer, the Holy Spirit just said this word to me, streamlined, streamlined. I was like, what are you talking about, Holy Spirit? For like two, three, three days, that word was just in my mind until I looked it up. It simply means that you are just putting processes in your life or even in, in, in an organization to make um, systems or to make things go up a bit smoother and better as well so one of the things that god really emphasized for me in my 30s that i need to streamline i need to put order order in my life in my faith journey in my finances in my career in my marriage in raising my children in everything that i that i am doing there should be order that by this time we are not going helter skelter we are not just doing anything anyhow but there is order there is process there is systems there's everything that that that, that you need for him to be able to bless it as well because we know that the bible said the, the bible says that god is not a god of confusion but, but god he's a god of order there is order in the kingdom of god and one of the verses that i really really liked um when it comes to this um putting order in your life I'm sorry, I've got my laptop in front of me here. I made some notes. <laughs> and the Bible verse that really um, really made sense for, for me when it comes to putting your life in order is this. It's 1 Kings 18 from verse 30 to 37 in the message version. I like reading the Bible. Okay, I've come to like <laughs> reading the, the Bible when, when I am talking. So if you do not like... We're reading long scriptures. You just let me know below and then I'll be able to work around that as well. But anyway, um, the, um, the Bible says in um, 1 Kings 18, 32-37 and we are reading in the message translation. It says, Then Elijah told the people, Enough of that. It's my turn. Gather around. And they gathered. He then put the altar back together for by now it was in ruins. So this is this is Elijah after he told people um do I, have, do I need to go through the story? <laughs> but this is Elijah after um the other people tried to show how their God works. So now he said it's my turn. Let me show you how my God works. So before he started talking or showing them how his God works, he first put the altar of his God in order so i think also for us before you want to show forth the glory of the lord or you are not sure forth how much god works put order in your life i think you can put you are you are able to put your life in 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 order once you are able to evaluate to see the things that are working and the things that are not working. You are able to put order in your life when you know that this is not the way that I am supposed to go, but now I am realigning myself, but I will not just start out um, anyhow, but rather I will just first put order, put the things that, that, you, that, you, that you already have. Financially, do a spreadsheet put it on a on a um, spreadsheet your children evaluate how is their attitude your marriage e e evaluate how is the marriage what am i doing wrong or what am i doing right in your career where do you want to go what do you want to do do you like the career that that you are in right now do you want to change careers do you want to upgrade do you want to upskill and do all of those things so that's the order that we are talking about and then it seems again that elijah Oops, sorry. Elijah took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes of Jacob, the same Jacob to whom God had said, from now your name is Israel. He built the stones into the altar in honor of God. The second thing that I am seeing here that the altar is not built 
for he for himself or you are not building yourself or your altar for yourself but you want to make sure that it is in honor of god and remember it's not all about you it's not all about what other people might say but mainly it's about god so you are you 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 are allowed to evolve you are allowed to grow into the person that god has called you to be as well it doesn't matter whether you are 30 you are 20 you are 10 you are 50 as long as you are building your life to honor god that's all that matters and then it says then elijah dug a fairly wide trench around the altar he laid firewood on the altar cut up the ox put it put it on the wood and said fill four buckets with water and drench both the ox and the firewood then he said do it again and they did it then he said do it a third time and they did it a third time the altar was drenched and the trench was filled with water i've had to adopt this um statement for myself you do it scared you do it you do it afraid do it scared do it again and do it again do it again until you succeed because living a life for christ and building your life up for 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 christ it's a lot of work it's not a, gl a glamorous work but it's a holy and glorious work as well so at the end of the day if you try to do it the first time and you failed you are able to do it again and do it again by the grace of God until you succeed at working uh, with God. And remember, building up a relationship or building up your life in Christ is not a sprint, it's a marathon. We are just running and running and running until we kiss this earth goodbye. 36 says, when it was time for the sacrifice to be offered, Elijah the prophet came up and prayed. Oh God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, make it known right now that you are, you are God in Israel, that I am your servant and I am doing what I am doing under your orders. Answer me, O oh God. Answer me and reveal to these people that you are God, the true God, and you are giving these people another chance at repentance. <laughs> you know that our God is not a God of one chance. He is a God of another chance. So it says here that um, God, that you are giving these people another chance at repentance. There is another chance to repent. There is another chance to change your ways. Because we always think that repentance is, is, is only for the unbeliever or for the sinner. But it's actually for both the unbeliever and the believing believer <laughs> okay <laughs> because repentance it means that change your mind change the way that you think until it aligns to the ways of god as well so what i'm trying to say is this whether you are in your 30s or 40s or your even 50s you are allowed to evolve and grow into the person that god has called you to be so uh, so there are two things that we spoke about in this video and that is having your relationship with god and building it gradually and then secondly streamline put your life in order so that the blessing of the lord may flow easily in your life as well so if you know that you do not have a relationship with christ and you would love to get to know him we can pray this prayer together we can just close your eyes and bow down and say dear heavenly father thank you for sending your son jesus thank you that he died and he rose again on the third day now i receive the lord jesus as my lord and savior thank you O oh lord for forgiving my sins Thank you for paying the price for me. Now I am born again because I believe and I confess Jesus as my Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you have prayed that prayer with me today, uh, please um, comment down below that I have received Jesus today. And I hope this video has blessed you and you will definitely let me know down below your thoughts and where are you in your life and in your work with jesus thank you so much for tuning in today and i'll see you on the next one
Full and gracious, and the.